This screencast is one in a series on process calculations, and the title is Reaction Systems Component Mass Balances. The content is Stream Variables and Component Fluxes, Component Mass Balance Approach, the Reaction Parameter, the concept of independent reactions, the number of independent reactions, the reaction matrix, and the rank of the reaction matrix, and then there will be an example on how to apply component mass balances to process calculations. Let's consider a system where carbohydrates, CH2O, are digesting using oxygen according to the respiration reaction. CH2O plus oxygen gas, O2, yields CO2 plus H2O. The system could be an organism with input streams, including reactants, and one or more output streams with reactants, products, and possibly also byproducts. The aim of process calculations is to calculate the fluxes of components in and out of systems. Here we will apply the component view, considering CH2O, O2, CO2, and H2O. And we should note that mass in does not equal mass out, and the number of moles in does not equal the number of moles out. The stream variables are expressed in terms of component fluxes. In the input stream, stream 1, we have two molar fluxes, each represented of stream variables, F1CH2O and F1O2, and the corresponding stream variables are found in the output stream. Mass balances are expressed as component mass balances, which means that the input plus the production equal the output. The new thing here is a production term, because components can be produced or consumed. The production term is quantified in the same units as the stream variables. That could be moles or moles per hour. The production is also quantified in terms of the reaction parameter, and it denotes the rate by which a chemical reaction proceeds from left to right. In our process calculations, we must include one reaction parameter for each independent chemical reaction. And I will use the notation Xi1, Xi2, etc. And each reaction parameter becomes an unknown in the degree of freedom analysis. Let us look into how to apply the reaction parameter. First, let's start with one reaction. A is converted to B in a chemical reaction. A yields 2B. Now, the reaction parameter, Xi, is introduced to quantify the production of A and B by the reaction. So the mass balances, which are on the form input plus production equal output, become, for the mass balance for A, F1A minus Xi equals F2A, while the mass balance for B becomes 2Xi equals F2B. In this example, we have two reactions. Reaction 1, where A is transformed to 2B, and reaction 2, where 2A is transformed to C. In this case, we have four stream variables, and we must introduce two reaction parameters, Xi1 and Xi2, each representing one of the reactions that take place in the system. The mass balances come as follows. F1A minus Xi1 minus 2xi2 equals F2A. And the fact that we have two terms for the production is a consequence of the fact that A reacts both in reaction 1 and in reaction 2. For B, we have the mass balance 2xi1 equals F2B, because B is produced in reaction 1 and 2B are produced each time the reaction goes one time from left to right. And the mass balance for C, Xi2 equals F2C, which shows that C is produced in reaction 2. We must check that the reactions that we quantify in our process calculations are independent. And one reaction parameter can be defined for each independent reaction. Reactions are independent if they are not linear combinations of two or more other chemical reactions. Consider the following two reactions. They are independent, because one cannot be produced as a combination of the other. On the contrary, in this example, one of these three reactions are not independent, because 
the third reaction can be produced as the sum of the two first. We can analyze whether a reaction is independent or not by means of the reaction matrix. The number of independent reactions, and thus the number of necessary reaction parameters, equals the rank of the reaction matrix. And the reaction matrix is defined as, in the rows, we have each reaction in the system, and in the columns, we put the stoichiometric coefficients for each component participating in the reaction. We must note that the stoichiometric coefficients are negative for reactants, but they're positive for products. Let's take two examples. Here we have 1 yields B and B yields 2C. The rank of the reaction matrix is 2 because the reaction matrix is the stoichiometric coefficients in reaction 1 with respect to A, B, and C and the stoichiometric coefficients for the second reaction for A, B, and C. In a second example, we have three reactions, and the rank of the reaction matrix is 2, because one of the chemical reactions is not independent of the others. Let's take an example on process calculations using component mass balances. In a system, 80% of the carbohydrates, CH2O, in the feed are converted to CO2. Calculate the molar fraction of CO2 in the dry output gas stream if the molar input of oxygen gas is three times larger than the molar input of CH2O. The six-step methodology tells us that we should clarify the process conditions. We should make a process chart with system boundaries and stream variables. We should make a degree of freedom analysis, and in this case we should put emphasis on the reaction matrix. We should form the system of equations, make a computer-aided solution, and supply a clear answer. First, we clarify the process conditions. This is a reaction system. It is at steady state, and the problem is stated in terms of molar units. To the right, we have a process chart with a system boundary and the six stream variables. Because we have four components, one reaction, one input stream, and one output stream, we find two of the stream variables in the input stream, stream one, we find four of the stream variables in the output stream, stream 2. The first step in the degree of freedom analysis is to analyze the reaction matrix. We have the following components, CH2O, O2, CO2, and H2O, and we have one reaction. So this will be a matrix with only one line and four columns. When we calculate the rank of this reaction matrix, then we get the number of independent reactions. And since there's only one reaction, the answer is obvious. The rank of the reaction matrix is 1. To proceed with the degree of freedom analysis, the number of stream variables is 6. We have one reaction parameter. There are no specified stream variables. We have four component mass balances that we can compile. We have two subsidiary process information, and we can introduce one basis of calculation. So the degrees of freedom is zero. The system of equation is composed of the four component mass balances. The first one is for CH2O, which says that F1 CH2O minus Xi equals F2 CH2O. You should observe the negative sign on the reaction parameter for the first two equations because they are the mass balances for the reactants. And you should note the positive sign on the reaction parameters for CO2 and H2O, since they are produced in the reaction. We have the subsidiary process information. The first one says that 80% of the carbohydrates in the input are converted in the reaction. And we also have information on the feed ratio. Finally, we have the basis of calculation, where I've selected F1CH2O to be 100. This can be expressed in matrix notation on the form A times X equals Y, where A is a matrix of coefficients, and X is a column vector that contains the stream variables as well as the reaction parameter. So the reaction parameter is the seventh unknown in this case. Y is the right-hand side of the equations.
The fifth step is to make a numerical solution, and this is preferably done in MATLAB. The solution array is as follows. All the values of the stream variables, you should also note that xi equals 80. So that means that the chemical reaction proceeds 80 times from left to right for each 100 moles of CH2O that is in the input. Finally, the clear answer is that the molar fraction of CO2 in the dry output gas is F2CO2 divided by the sum of F2O2 and F2CO2. The content of this screencast was stream variables and component fluxes, the basis for the component mass balance approach, the reaction parameter that is used to quantify the production term in the mass balance, which is input plus production equal output, independent reactions, including number of independent reactions, the reaction matrix, and how to interpret the rank of the reaction matrix. And finally, a comprehensive example on how to use component mass balances in process calculations.